What's going on YouTube? Kronos here and welcome back to another PSO2 video. So today's video, we're actually going to be going over the trailer or I guess the follow-up video that they made for PSO2 NGS. Now, this is of course days down the line. I've had some time to uh, review your comments, your uh, corrections, because yes, I did misunderstand a couple of things or, you know, that's, you know, it's, it's kind of the I guess I'm trying to think of the word you can use in this situation, which is not coming to mind, but it's uh, something to keep in mind whenever you're doing content on first sight read is that you're going to misunderstand some stuff, which is cool. Um, I appreciate you guys tossing that into the comments. Those of you who are respectful with those criticisms and things of that sort. And those of you who weren't were mostly ignored. So there you go. Um, but uh, anyway, now we've had some time to kind of sit and marinate with all the information I have reached out and kind of talk to some other content creators who I um I aspire to some of their greatnesses that aren't exactly as invested in the PSO2 community as I personally am getting their you know their side of the uh, the idea and the announcements that sort of thing basically trying to gather as much information and context as possible and now with all of that i want to sit down and actually go through and review the trailer all the information we know and kind of what that means to me for the future of pso2 now i also mentioned that i was going to do kind of a deep dive into the trailer itself after sitting down and kind of looking at it i felt like it was kind of just something that you do for fun like honestly i did it kind of on my twitch channel already a little bit um just having fun with the trailer itself so I didn't really want to dive too deep into it, but we're going to watch the trailer basically. I'm going to let it run all the way through, and then we're going to go back and cut individual points and talk about what those things specifically mean and what I think they're going to mean for the future itself. So oh, before we jump into that, just as a heads up, guys, I would highly, highly recommend heading over to PSO2's actual like North American page or even the uh, JP page, honestly, not to shill for them specifically. But if you subscribe and actually press the bell notification icon, you can see when these videos actually go up. And most of the time, these videos specifically, and I will show you guys the example, these videos specifically are all just either news or the scratches. So if that's what you care about, you can always uh, get the notification for that video itself. Worst case scenario, stay subscribed to this channel and I'm going to go over it anyway. So. Either way, up to you guys. So let me go ahead and let this run, and uh, once it's done, we'll be right back. God, that looks amazing. I try to shut up during most of this, but oh, beautiful. And that date. We weren't expecting that. Dude, I don't know what their for like their love for these boxy faces are, but it shows. <laughs> it shows a lot.
Okay, so that is a lot of information to kind of go over, and man, that looks awesome. So let's kind of dive into each individual portion of the video itself and kind of talk about what everything sort of means. So we've got the video kind of running itself. We kind of see a bit of the backgrounds, and then it just jumps like in right in New Genesis, right? So first things notice immediately are the fields are open, they're expansive, they look amazing. Um, even in the shot here, actually, we'll go back just a moment. Actually, what I'm going to do here is this. I'm ha I have this on 4K for my benefit. No one else's. I'm not sure why I left it on that. But um, let's uh, hop forward a little bit. Actually, I think it's right here. So, like, right here, you can kind of see a little bit of just, like, the general feel. It looks like this is mostly going to be the perspective you see as you're moving through. You can see a bunch of enemies around, which these new enemies are called dolls. I can't really tell if... Actually, I'm going to go back a little bit here really quick. Can't really tell what that's supposed to be. I'm sure like someone noticed like maybe a drop or something or um, well, it's there too. And there maybe these are like. Resources. And there they go. There's one here and there's one here. I'm not maybe, you know, whatever it could be, but, you know, you can see them here. It looks like it might be resources of some sort, but uh, you can kind of see their field here itself, a bunch of enemies. Again, this looks more like the actual perspective that you'll be seeing in the game itself. Again, this is early development stuff, so we're not going to try to read too much for, or too far into this. But of course, it talks about the world. Hang on. A new world a thousand years after Oracle's battle. You know what? I never even read this. I just saw it and kind of looked right past it to the beautiful stuff behind it. So a new, a new world... 1,000 years after Oracle's battle. Interesting. So this is the distant future. Experience a wide open playing field. Okay, cool, cool. A lot of really cool looking areas, upgraded graphics engine and game system, of course. And then they do the typical S jump into combat. Very reminiscent of the original trailer. And then of course they're running in. I kind of hate, hate the fact they have these effects on the scene because I can't see as much. But uh, you can, of course, it's very similar to the scene we saw earlier where they're just fighting a bunch of dolls, it looks like, which are the new enemies we're fighting. Some level 20 dudes, it looks like. Um, granted, of course, these numbers don't mean anything, but you can see they're level 20. Uh, looks like he's got about 440 HP, 100 PP, so that system seems to be the same. On his pal, it looks to be a monomate, a... On the far right, I can see, is that a moon atomizer? Yep, and then a photon blast. So some people were concerned about some things later on that we'll talk about, and we'll mention that in just a moment. Again, open world, very cool looking. I'm actually really excited to see how we get down to these worlds themselves, if the camp ships or gateway ships are still going to play a part, that sort of thing. And I guess it's just going to be a lot more exploration, right? The day-night cycles look amazing. Of course, there's the ways to travel. You've got the photon dash, which it looks like your photon dash, you kind of dashed into it and there was a perfect attack circle and you started moving into the photon dash. So maybe just the double dash. So they talk about character creation at this point. So the character creation um, looks really, really cool. It's uh, again, these boxy faces for some reason. I guess they're just showing off that you have a lot of options. That's, uh, that's a looker right there. Let me tell you, who oh, buddy. Yet again, PSO2 knows its audience, the female character. Looks okay. Male character, kind of eh. <laughs> but of course, with proper customization, we can uh, we can get them looking right. And I'm sure, as people have asked, and they're going to ask, they'll probably adjust the sliders of just about everything. Now, we don't know how height sliders are going to work if you're going to be able to make yourself super, super tiny. But people always like, it's about the purport. It's about being weird. All right. <laughs> just, just don't be weird. No, I'm kidding. Who am I kidding? We're all weird. Anyway, movable fingers. Funny enough, they talk about movable fingers here. However, when we uh, look at the trailer and someone put it out on Twitter that um, the movable trailer or the movable fingers aren't moving in the trailer. So kind of cool or kind of funny. Um, just a quick look from what I can tell he's wearing. Let's see. One, two, three, four, maybe five accessories. It could be five, maybe six. These blades are separated. So it looks like there are more accessory slots. Yeah, even it could be even more accessories than ever before and change their placement. It looks like you can put the placement of the accessories super, like super far. They actually show, I think a little bit later of you moving. Yeah, this chest, this piece here is now behind his head and on his knee. So like you can move them super, super far, many customization options. 
of course, proportions, all that good stuff. So character creation compatibility. So creation will be available across both sides and you can play characters on either side. You can use either system you want. Um, and that'll go on into how uh, this will work a little bit further. But again, some more gameplay, some pretty cool stuff. Now, I know this was actually a concern beforehand, specifically with one of the photon arts that I saw where someone was used or one of the uh, photon art attacks was, I believe, a rising edge. And one of the comments I heard was, look at the hit stop on Rising Edge. It's even more now than it was in the original game. Well, one of two things I've learned from playing tons and tons of different games are, one, usually the people showing off the game aren't playing it optimally, so I highly doubt the hit stop's that intense. And two, it's also early, early alpha footage. Like, I wouldn't even call this an alpha. This is just first look footage. So I highly doubt that's going to be the case. So just, just hang in there. Uh, let's see, open, yep, so we got some more field stuff, pretty cool. They talk about the new enemies, dolls. Now, I have to give a, a small shout out because this isn't my idea alone. I'm gonna give credit where credit was due. I was thumbing through Twitter and uh, happened to come across a tweet from Tate who mentioned what I'd really like to see is Olga Flo coming back as being the one to lead the new enemies. And looking at these enemies, I get a real big Olga Flo vibe. So maybe, maybe not, we'll have to see. So sharing between the two universes. So this is something that people are going to be concerned about. So we're going to let all these run through real quick, and then we're going to stop it at the end. Bam. Okay. So character growth will not carry over. This includes levels, experience, skills, photon arts, ex techniques, etc. So basic character power is not going to carry over, which is a good thing. If character power carries over, what's the point of playing the new game when it comes out, right? So there's going to be some, you know, some end or some uh, some reset there. Currency affecting the game's economy will not carry over. This includes Meseta and Fun. I personally, well, I guess technically Fun does affect the economy in a sense, but uh, Meseta is the big one there. Again, makes perfect sense. We don't want people to start hoarding horrifically um, in this game and then become billionaires over on the other or on uh, NGS and make things super, super difficult for new players that are going to be coming in specifically for NGS because. I mean, that's kind of the thing. There are players right now who were new into PSO2, started playing the game, and now they saw NGS, and now their thoughts are, oh, well, I can just wait for NGS. I don't have to wait, like play through PSO2. Perfectly honest, PSO2 has a lot of really, really fun systems that are going to be coming into the game moving forward. I'd highly recommend if you have time to kill and you're not doing anything else, granted, if you have other games to play, by all means, go play those other games. But if you've got nothing else going on, it's not a bad idea to just play PSO2 while you're waiting for NGS. It's almost, I was about to skip forward again. Um, so again, like mentioning about the Meseta whole thing, the the idea behind that, of course, I'm sure you guys remember from the early, early Xbox game, or from the early, early days of PSO2 on North American servers where it was only on the Xbox, cost of things when it comes to the scratches were much cheaper at the very beginning when no one had any money versus how much they are now. And don't even get me started on some of the JP or some of the ships on the JP servers. It is insane how much more expensive things are. I'm looking at you, Tubi Hair. Yes, you're still 100 mil. No, I'm still not buying you on JP. Um, AC Scratch and SG are shared between both games, which is awesome. So SG Scratch, I'm sorry, SG and AC are going to be shared. I mean, uh, granted, to be honest, I'm pretty sure the um, the fashion wouldn't really differ substantially between both games. Maybe they'll give you a reason to jump over to one game to get some fashion that will be brought into the other, so on and so forth. But I'm sure like when they do like future a ac scratches and things of that sort um it's going to be kind of between both games or it's going to be available for both games so they did mention like certain things so it comes up to kind of the next portion here weapons units and mags obtained in pso2 can be used in pso2 ngs as well however their functions abilities and appearances will remain or temporarily change actually i thought that was gonna be something else that is not what i thought it was going to be so we're going to take a step back first um, so the AC, AC and SG thing, they have mentioned that stuff related to your character that's tied to your character, basically, will be transferable. Now, they've only specifically mentioned emotes, and lo or emotes slash lobby actions and, oh, excuse me, and uh, accessories. Now, these are things that, of course, we really would want to make sure they transfer over. That's awesome. But they said, etc. They also have said this is a blanket statement. They haven't specifically said all fashion. They haven't specifically said fashion tied to your character. They just said things that are registered to your character itself. So we can make the assumption that it's all fashion. But again, temper your expectations. Wait for them to actually, or I personally would wait for them to actually confirm that sort of thing first, just to find out what exactly is going to be going over. But I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to be updating the um, the 
graphics engine of PSO2 to match NGS, then it's going mean, to, all the fashion is probably going to get updated as well. So it'll be fine. But I wonder how much fashion we'll be getting in the future while they work on this. Hmm. Or if it's just the NGS team that'll be doing all this stuff. So we'll have to see. But, and I jumped ahead, but we'll go back to it again. Weapons, units, and mags obtained in PSO2 can be used in PSO2 and GS as well. However, their functions, abilities, and appearances will be tempor will temporarily change. Now, they go into this a little bit more, and I went into this a bit more on my previous video. But basically, the way this is working out at the moment, they mentioned that the weapons and units may not be equipable until reaching certain levels. Now, I feel like they wouldn't go through the extra time to mention that specifically if the weapons weren't going to retain some of their power granted i highly doubt that you're going to go into ps2 ngs with all of your overpowered weapons or with all of your like your top tier end game weapons and be able to level up get to that point and then have all the top tier weapons and then be done with gearing i'm pretty sure there's going to be a difference in the gearing when it comes to that things you're going to want on one end versus the things you're going to want on the other end plus you might not even play the same class going on both sides so who knows but it sounds like they really want to make sure that what you're getting over on PSO2 can give you a slight edge when it comes to NGS, which is not a bad thing. It's a good reason to keep playing the game, keep getting your gear and enjoying it in PSO2. And then when you go over to NGS, you're not completely starting from scratch. You're going to have a little bit of a heads up. But we also want to make sure that it's not so far ahead that you're hurting the new players that are coming in as well. So that balance is going to be important. Um, it does also mention in that post that we kind of reviewed that mags will not provide anything other than basically aesthetic purposes so they're not going to be tied to your photon or your photon blast they're not going to provide any stats and they're not going to be um actually that's it yeah photon blast and printing set oh they also won't be helping you in combat basically so they're not going to be attacking not a bad thing in my opinion i feel like that's a better way of balancing things because then you have to balance just the player and not all these other arbitrary systems to make sure that they're not overpowered alongside of the player um and i personally don't mind mags being cosmetic to be honest that's kind of one of the coolest parts of mags is the cosmetics from them but as someone who's also played ps2 for a very long time i'm used to mags kind of being built into my like character progression and things of that sort so we'll have to see but then there's also kind of busted combinations like when I think about, for example, Bouncer Phantom, who is able to get basically <laughs> double use out of all of their uh, out of their mag completely. So basically um, between two skills between Bouncer and Phantom, the two of them together, both proccing for your mag, you're basically essentially getting almost 1200 main stat out of the use of mag, which is kind of nutty um, It makes it very, very powerful. So I'm sure they have kind of thought those things. I thought about those things and probably just don't want to deal with balancing that whatsoever. So that's not going to be there. Um, so this is the things that I'll be sharing. And about PSO2 the original. So they kind of mentioned this here. You'll have access to both games. Um, essentially you'll be able to play both PSO2 and PSO NGS and they show in the footage itself granted you now this is where this is where waking up brain me messed up originally you will not um, where I saw this is oh this looks pretty much the same as PSO2 it doesn't look that different of course because it says right in the screen no footage is from the current PSO2 duh anyway um, they basically were trying to show off that the gameplay of how the game functions itself is going to remain the same just with upgraded graphics so you'll be able to play PSO2 with upgraded graphics along with enjoying NGS and its specific game styles. And then, of course, they show some more gameplay from NGS. Again, you get that similar camera angle that I'd imagine most people are going to be using. Um, but one thing to keep in mind, of course, is that upgrading the game's systems are going, or I'm sorry, upgrading the game's core graphic system is also going to cause the specs to update as well. So those of you guys who have been playing on potato PCs, you may want to start saving some on the side. I mean, granted, this isn't until like next year, probably later in next year. I highly doubt it's going to be early next year, but later into next year, um, we'll be looking at something like NGS. You may want to go ahead and save up and upgrade a couple of things there. And of course, shows off character customization again, showing off and talking about everything they have access to, and then their model being free to play. So the and of course, note some premium items available. The second thing a lot of people mentioned to me about, yes, essentially just saying that it's going to have the same model where you've got some premium and you've got free to play. Same model PSO2 currently has, which honestly, I'm not against the model that PSO2 uses at the moment. 
it's perfectly fine. Playing as a free-to-play player is actually enough for most people. If you take advantage of all of the systems you have have access to, I know a lot of players that play as free-to-play players specifically, and they don't actually pay any extra money towards the game. So some of the best players actually I've see, ever seen play that way. And then of course, then it talks about where the game will be available. It says play, uh, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Windows 10. And then like the next portion of this kind of makes me sad because in the top right it says Microsoft Azure. I don't know if that means it's going to be on the Microsoft Store. Uh, hopefully not, but I mean, it probably will be. We'll just have to kind of deal with it as it goes along. Hopefully, hopefully it goes well. We'll have to see. And again, footage is from a game that is under development. And then of course the final, it's coming in 2021. Here's hoping that sticks. They're probably saying 2021 that way they can hold on to the thought process it's december 2021 so it's like over a year away basically at this point but it is a pretty big undertaking that they're looking at doing and as for looking at what my honest thoughts are on the matter when it comes to this i think it's probably the best way they could have ever gone about releasing a new game um i know a lot of people are currently like kind of blown away by the fact they're announcing this in the first place and to be perfectly honest so am I. But if they were going to announce a big overhaul to the game itself and an entirely new option of playing another portion of the game, this is probably the best way to do it. Now, there are two things, two major criticisms I have in this situation itself. First and foremost, when they were going to announce it, they should have announced the follow-up video shortly after they announced the, they had the announcement itself. There was just too much time they gave about a 24 hour period roughly for people just to speculate all over the place where no one knew what the heck was going on. They were like, is this a new update? Is this um, a brand new game? Like so on and so forth. Even I thought it was update because it said flat out in the video description update. So it made perfect sense to me that I'm looking at this like, oh, it's an update. Of course it's an update. That makes perfect sense. However, not necessarily the case. Um, it is a new game and an update. So it was both funny enough. Um, but my second criticism would have been that this was announced way too early. Um, I know they wanted to get people, and I'm sure this is because of the numbers kind of plummeting a bit when it comes to PSO2. There's really not a lot of hype behind the game at the moment because the initial hype died down. Players have run into problems with having the game installed and uninstall itself from Microsoft Store. Granted, yes, that is Microsoft. That's not Sega specifically. It is a Microsoft Store that's doing it. However, it is hurting their game, so they do need to look into it. Granted, they are looking into releasing the game on other platforms, but okay, of course, that takes time. And how quickly they'll be able to do that, we don't know. Also, it keeps people concerned about, hey, well, when this game comes out, how is it not going to experience and have the same problems that PSO2 have? Which, again, these are all completely understandable concerns. However, it is a far ways away. We may not even be dealing with these same problems by the time that time, that time comes around itself. So, fingers crossed, here's hoping everything works out. And I mean, honestly, I know some people are kind of turned away by it, but I'm super hyped. Granted, again, this was a little bit early. I would have definitely waited to announce this probably like maybe next year, maybe halfway through next year and be like, hey, look, in six months, um, this is coming around. Like, get everyone caught up, give people some time to enjoy the content a little bit and then be like, yo, this is around the corner, by the way. Um, this doesn't mean that everything you guys have been doing has been invalidated, but however, or I'm sorry, however, um, you guys have this to also look forward to as well. I think that would have been a much better announcement, but there are some people that are like, well, this is basically PSO3. And I get that. It is essentially, in a, in a sense, could be just basically announced as PSO3 and people would be like, yeah, this is definitely just PSO3. But it also works in a lot of sense like an expansion for the game itself um, with the option to play on either end, which to be perfectly honest, not many games do nowadays. Uh, PSO2 does have the option to play another game that's available currently only in the East called PSO2 ES. ES does a very similar system to what this game does where your character is actually within both worlds. They have individual storylines. They have individual systems and battle systems where the weapons and the units actually do work on both sides, but they have different power. Um, so this isn't the first time they've done a system similar to this. Granted, ES is definitely a phone game. It is a mobile game. It is supposed to appeal to that platform itself. And it does have its sort of, you know, I don't say it struggles, but it has its own sort of um, models and things of that sort. But it does continue very successfully. And it does partner with PSO2 in a lot of ways over on JP. Honestly, I've mentioned tons of times in my streams, things of that sort is like, I would love to have PSO2 ES just so I could play some more PSO2 when I'm not playing PSO2. 
um, just to give me something to do, right, while we're waiting on new content. But it isn't a perfect answer and a perfect system. They could have definitely done this better. Um, and that is something to keep in mind moving forward where they could have held off and answered all of the questions instead of leaving people thinking, man, I don't even want to play a PSO2 right now, which is fine. If you have nothing else to do, man, play PS2 if you want to. If you don't, if you have other games to play, play other games. You're not really hurting yourself by continuing to play. New Genesis, more than likely, you're going to be starting around the same place that other people are. Or even if you're behind them, you're not going to be that much further behind them. You'll be able to catch up. Everyone knows Sega does catch-up mechanics. It's a thing that's happened for a very, very long time. When we get more information about how New Genesis is going to work, I'm sure there'll be campaigns in PSO2. Currently, like, there's a campaign actually right now. Um, there is a campaign for the announcement of NGS right here where they're giving out experience for people. Another EXP campaign, because I'm sure a lot of people didn't actually get to level cap because of all the issues they were running into. So those are just my general thoughts on the matter. I think it's going to be a good time. I'm actually fairly excited for the game itself, but it isn't without its quirks and its problems. So hopefully Sega irons this out, gets things together, and we can have a fun time with NGS as it comes along. If you guys have any questions, feel free to toss them in the comments below. I do want to create a dialogue and a discussion. That way we can enjoy ourselves, have a little bit of speculation here and there, all that stuff. But of course, not total baseless speculation, but if you want to make baseless speculation, we're going to call it baseless speculation. However, among everything else, be respectful to one another. Keep in mind everything that we're talking about is via text. I can talk, and I'm actually the one saying, you know, I'm the one having the video going and whatnot, but uh, not everything is going to come across the same way that it comes across to you in your head. So uh, keep that in mind when you're providing a response or even anything along those lines. However it reads, is it going to read someone possibly differently? And if you don't care, man, then hey, that's up to you. But be respectful. Be nice to one another. I shouldn't have to tell you guys that. Anyway, a like on the video is much appreciated and absolves you half of your ad block guilt. The other half is absolved by subscribing and is completely free. Like I mentioned earlier, the notification or uh, subscribing to the channel and pressing the bell icon does keep you up to date with videos that are going on on the channel itself. Um, it also turns out lets you know of my community posts where I post whenever I'm going live when it comes to PSO2 or any other game that I play on my Twitch channel. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter or are in the Discord. Thanks again for joining me on this one, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Peace out.